Hey guys, Payday here. Before this video starts, I want to give a huge shout out to Emil Finn for the awesome thumbnails you're going to see for this marathon. Emil, thank you so much. They look amazing. Anyway, on with the video. Grass, one of nature's most widespread plants and it's no wonder that video games adore it. Grass levels in video games are usually the training areas, but some are adrenaline pumping tests of endurance. So here are my top 10 grass levels in games. Let me lay a few ground rules. I'm only counting levels that take place on plains, hills, forests, or jungles. I will not be counting tropical or beach areas. Not now at least, maybe in the future. Secondly, one per franchise because this will be filled with Sonic or Mario levels the whole time. Anyway, let's get started. Rayman Origins, a fun and enjoyable platformer, and for my first Rayman game, this got me highly interested in the series. It's fast paced, frantic, highly addictive with the bonus levels, and its first level really engaged me. Welcome to Gibberish Jungle. This level is so enjoyable. Some of the main mechanics for this level include blue bulbs that can remove platforms, tentacle claw infested waters, and water slides that lead to tricky platforming. The enemies are rather basic, hunters and livid stones are probably the only enemies to appear in the zone, but for the first level it's understandable. The boss for this area, Boss Bird, is really freaking cool. Riding a mosquito becomes a 2D space shooter as you take out enemies and eventually fight one on one with this thing, and it becomes an incredibly fun fight. It especially helps the next level after that, it's probably my favorite level in the game. But we'll get to that next video. Kirby's Adventure! Gotta say, my personal favorite Kirby game in the series. It's just a ton of fun just becoming a black hole of destruction and eating the enemy's delicious morsels. <clears throat> anyway, just like a Rayman Origins, Kirby's Adventure's first level is a grass level, and it's probably my favorite level in the game Vegetable Valley. Vegetable Valley is such a gorgeous looking area, especially for the NES era, and it really wows me with its color palette. As for level, being the first of Kirby's adventure, it's rather simplistic, but even then it leaves an incredible first impression. Located in this area are things like Wild Doos, Wild Dees, Blade Knights, Hotheads, and Sparkies. The amount of copy abilities available, especially for the first area, is insane! Beam, Burning, Crash, Cutter, Fire, Needle, Spark, and Freeze are common, and if you locate the secret room, UFO becomes available. Needless to say, when you're done with each level, you'll just say to yourself, That's a lot of damage! And do I need to mention the boss, Wispy Woods? While easy, I gotta say that Wispy is such an iconic character for the series that it was worth mentioning. Vegetable Valley is a great level for my favorite Kirby game. Mega Man X has to be my favorite Mega Man game. It's fast paced, ridiculously fun, and the boss fights and stages are incredibly thrilling. Needless to say, Mega Man X along with 3 and 7 are some of my favorite installments of the franchise. And I think you know where I'm going with this. Number 8 is Sting Chameleon. Sting Chameleon stage is fast paced yet long, but for me it balances out. First things first is the mini boss to get the armor upgrade. This guy takes fucking forever to kill, but it's worth it for the armor upgrade which will reduce the damage you take by 50%. In this stage are enemies disguised as rocks, dragonfly enemies, and enemies with a giant spinning ball on a chain. There's even cool ass moments where you take a ride on the ride armor to beat the shit out of enemies in your path. And even better is the boss fight against Sting Chameleon himself. The cloak into the background and will either use his tongue or fire the Chameleon Sting. He's rather easy to predict, but it's all a fun fight just for the concept alone. And the weapon you get is awesome. Chameleon Sting will fire a beam that splits into three, taking enemies in front of you, or diagonally up, or down. And the charge variation can make X invulnerable for a few seconds. This weapon is a blast to use. And need I mention his kick-ass stage theme? All in all, Sting Chameleon has a fun stage, fun fight, and an amazing weapon. Choosing 
between just one forest area in the Final Fantasy series was incredibly tough. Forest of War from 5, Phantom Forest from 6, Ancient Forest from 7, Evil Forest from 9. It was really tough, but I had to go with Magalania Woods from Final Fantasy X. Okay, let me gush here for a moment. Ooh, this place is so pretty! This colors are just gorgeous. I love the glow this place gives off, and especially like my god, his water reflects it's just Okay, okay, I'm good. Anyway. Makalania Woods is a location Titus and his party stop at on the way to Makalania Temple. In this place are some giant trees, a huge ass lake, and a bunch of fireflies floating around the area. Some of the monsters here are really cool, the Iguanons and Chimera being prime examples. The boss fight of this area is especially cool, Sparamorph. This guy will change his weakness every turn, so it requires heavy awareness of the boss. The music here is one of my favorite pieces in 10 called Calm Before the Storm, and it's such an incredible atmospheric piece. But I feel the need to mention the incredible bonding that Titus and Nina spend here, and this place plays another favorite song of mine called Sutegitene, or Isn't It Wonderful. This place is just a spectacle. The visuals, music, boss, enemies, and story moments make this place my favorite area in Final Fantasy X, along with Mount Gagasinth. <music> Gurumi and a Monstrous Adventure was a game I honestly didn't expect to enjoy, but funnily enough, this is one of my favorite games I've played this year. It's fun, hilarious, and dialogue, has a great soundtrack, and the gameplay is incredibly enjoyable. And what do you know, number 6 goes to the second area in the game, Radish Woods. First off, let me say that the environments here are gorgeous, and I love them so goddamn much. The way the torches light up in this forest give this place such a calming glow, and it's such a relaxing view. Radish Woods' enemies are also pretty interesting. Eels in the water, your typical phantoms, phantoms that disguise as tree, and lots and lots of spiders. This area loves to make you swim, so be sure to equip the goggles to ignore water damage. And can I say the boss of this area, Mosby, is one of the coolest fights in the game? It relies on heavy use of the homing attack to get close and wail on him, but it's fast paced and frantic and I love it. The music for this area is also really smooth. Not my favorites of the soundtrack, but definitely good. Radish Woods is a fantastic level, especially considering it's zone 2. Team Fortress 2, a fast paced, fun as hell FPS with some of the most entertaining characters I've ever seen. And choosing just one grass map from this game was hard, seeing as the game's grass levels are all enjoyable. But I decided to go back to the medieval times and went with the group keep. The group keep is one of the best maps I've ever played. It's spacious yet chaotic. Let me explain. The group keep is an attack defend map where you need to capture the two points on the side of this castle and then rush in to grab the last one once those bagpipes play. However, this place is fit for all classes to go chaotic. You see, with the exception of a few weapons, all enemies are restricted to melee weapons. The only classes that can use other weapons are scouts with things like the Mad Milks and Sodas, soldiers with the banners of the boots, demo with his boots and shields, heavy with his food items, medic with the crusader's crossbow, sniper can use the bow weapons and his backpack items, and Spy can use the Disguise Kit and watches... somehow. Anyway, this mode is nothing but a melee brawl to fight for the control points, and it's so much fun. It's fun to just go ham with your melee, beating people up to fight for these points, and doing things like charging into people as demo, getting bow headshots as sniper, going crazy with the Criticola, boxing people as heavy, etc. And I haven't even explained the map. It takes place in a castle on a mountain. Starbreeze can use the torches to light their arrows on fire, demos can use the rock outside of spawn to charge over the castle to give enemies a surprise, there's tons of places for ambushes and flanks, and it's spacious enough where people have one-on-one -on -one brawls. This map is just a load of fun. It's no wonder Ace loves it so much. Super 
Castlevania 4 is probably my favorite of the side-scrolling Castlevania games. It's a perfect balance of difficulty compared to the previous games, the soundtrack is lovely, the combat is great, and the game is fun all throughout. Stage 2 of this game definitely loves to prove that. Welcome to the Forest of Monsters. Speaking of monsters, this place has quite a bit. Spiders, grabby hands, skeletons, bats, crows, gargoyles, and frogs. The level design for this area is perfect, involving things like running water, swamps, and hooks for you to swing on. And need I mention this stage is so freaking pretty? The way the environment looks is gorgeously rendered, the water effects are well animated, and the sprites of the enemies are incredibly well made. And the music themes for this area are some of my favorites in the game. The Forest of Monsters is such a cool level, and it's one of my favorites in Super Castlevania 4. The Zelda series has some damn good grass and forest related dungeons that it was damn hard to choose. It was a toss between the Great Deku Tree from Ocarina of Time, Woodfall Majora's Mask, and Deepwood Shrine from the Minish Cap. But I decided to go with the obvious choice of the Forest Temple. The Forest Temple is filled with a bunch of challenges for Link to overcome after becoming an adult. Twisting hallways, the post sisters Link needs to kill to progress, the wall masters, the stalfuses, a crushing ceiling, using vines to climb walls, and many more. This place can be a labyrinth if you don't know what you're doing, but with patience, this place is a blast to explore. And the boss you fight here is probably the coolest of the game, Phantom Ganon. Phantom Ganon will ride his floating horse through paintings and using the fairy bow you have to shoot Phantom Ganon when he emerges. After a few hits, he'll fight you without his horse, although this form is pathetic seeing it's just, just energy tennis and not challenging in the slightest. The Forest Temple is probably my favorite temple in Ocarina of Time. It's fun, challenging, and has a fun boss. Nearly 20 years after Ocarina of Time's release, this temple is still a blast. Super Mario World is my favorite 2D Mario game. It's fun in both feel and play for both the casual and experienced players. And I think you know where I'm going with this. Yoshi's Island. This is such a fantastic starting area. A bunch of plains, hills, and mountains to explore, there's power so plenty, and it teaches you how to play effectively by teaching you things like the spin jump, how to use Yoshi, and much more. The music pieces here are incredible. They're incredibly vibrant and happy, and the overall theme of this game is probably one of my favorites in the series. The colors here are also really pretty. It's a beautiful looking first area, and it leaves such an incredible first impression on such a masterpiece of a game. Sonic Heroes, one of my favorite 3D Sonic games next to Unleashed Adventure. It's got really cool levels, the team mechanic was interesting and fun to use, and the music is kick-ass as always. Now choosing between grassy levels in the Sonic series was super hard, there's just so many to choose. Green Hill, Emerald Hill, Angel Island, Palm Tree Panic, Green Forest, White Jungle, Jungle Dryer, oh it was hard! But in the end, I decided with Frog Forest. This level is just so pretty, so much fun, the music is gorgeous, the team mechanics are used incredibly well on this stage. What else is there to say? Well, a lot. The main mechanic with this stage is frogs. These frogs when they spot you will cause it to rain which can cause vegetation and fruits to grow for platforming or exploration such as bouncy mushrooms or vines. There's these flower objects that will activate when you use a spin tornado, and while it's clunky at first it becomes really fun to control later on. This level is just a blast. But these visuals and music are so good. The colors here are absolutely incredible with the vibrant greens and yellows that make it pop. The music here is one of my favorite songs from Heroes, and that's saying a lot considering the soundtrack is incredible. Frog Forest is really enjoyable. It's got fun mechanics, beautiful atmosphere, great music. I could seriously go on and on about this stage and everything it does right. But this video needs to end somewhere. So stay tuned for next time when I discuss my favorite desert levels.